Hello friends, in this session I will be talking about a very important topic of discussion, English communication skills for developers. Just like many of you, I am also a software developer. I work on Microsoft.NET technologies. Now during my 16 years of experience, what I learned is that English communication is very important, not only for your success in your current organization, but also to make you a global professional. I happen to be working in India for many years. Then I really worked hard on my English communication skills and I got an opportunity to work in the United States and I did really well over there as well. Just like many of you who are listening to my talk right now or maybe later are not coming from schools or families or communities who really speak English on daily basis. I come from India from a state in India which is not known for very good English speakers. It's uh, needless to mention where I am from right now but uh, uh, this talk is going to to include a lot of personal stuff which not many people know about me maybe. Now what happened when I was in school I learned from Hindi medium throughout. I did my 12th uh, from Hindi medium too. Then I went for graduation to a bigger city again in the same state where I belong to and uh, at that time it was not very difficult for me to to communicate and to talk because everybody was talking in my native language and very less English was required. The English which was required at that particular time was only to read books which were printed in English. But all communication from teachers were again happening in my local language. So I kind of learned to read and understand the books which are printed in English medium but when it comes to communicate which is two-way communication you speak you listen and then you reply back this is what we call communication or having conversation with another person that is what I was lacking but I was very committed to work on it at that particular time uh, almost 14-15 years before I was not sure what path I will be choosing in future but that determination of mine to work on English helped me a lot and when I took the path of software field it helped me immensely because my skills were already brushed up when I really entered into the industry and I was able to communicate very easily and with a professional manner and I was able to impress some of people even. Now why I am talking about this is that many people in industry today are very good software developers. Very good. They are amazing and they feel really proud about it. As you can see on my blog here which is on my website mypassionfor.net you can see my latest article 10 rules to build English communication skills for developers. This article is also published on csharpcorner.com the site where I contribute to. If you want you can read it over there. I hope you might have already read it because it has been there for quite some time. As you can see this is my article here or if you want you can read it on my blog. So regardless of where you read it from or you don't read I'm going to cover all the rules here once again. So point which I was mentioning is that I am a very strong developer. Let me put myself into a shoes of a candidate who is technically strong regardless of what programming language or technology you are dealing with. And you say you know what I'm technically strong I don't need to communicate. That's right you are technically strong but it really matters for you in the longer run if you do not learn to communicate. Why? Why does it matter? Let's see 
the life cycle of any software developer in industry today. If you are a software developer, what would you like to become when you grow in that industry? Today you have, let's say, two years of experience. You are maybe SE, we call that software engineer or just a .NET developer. Few years down the line, you might be promoted to senior software engineer or senior programmer analyst or something similar. Few more years down the line, <clears throat> you may want to grow as a team lead or a tech lead. Now, if you assume the responsibilities of a team lead or tech lead, those responsibilities involve a lot of team handling, client management, not too much, but little bit, you will be interacting with maybe on-site coordinators or some sort of beyond your team communication is required. How do you do that? How do you achieve that? You need to have a very good communication skills. Just to summarize this point, second point, but I'm technically strong, so how does it matter to me? If you want to grow, you want to be a team lead, tech lead, technical program manager, technical project manager, even a software architect, solution architect, or technology manager. Different organizations have different designations, but all these roles require good communication skills. Hence, if you are only a developer, I have seen it in real life. Many of my colleagues have been into that situation. They cannot communicate and they end up working only as a developer. However, during their appraisal, every time they ask for a better position, but they are not given those positions because they do not communicate well. So be careful. It is very important. Just like your technical skills, communication is another skill. And here in this talk, I'm going to cover all those possibilities, all those options which you can take on daily basis to refine your skills. And you will can still contribute to your technical knowledge. So why English has become so important? What is happening in industry? English is like a meta language. It's a de facto language for many industries across the globe. I have a small story to tell you. Many, many years ago, when this aviation industry, aviation means airlines, flying aeroplanes, when this industry started, at that time there was a very serious accident happened. And that accident happened because there was an aircraft which was taking off and there was another aircraft which was landing. These two aircrafts could not communicate with the controlling tower because they were speaking in different languages. So one aircraft in the industry today needs to ask permission to take off, permission to land. And then controlling tower gives them permission to land at a different or a peculiar runway or some coordinates they set some rules and standards for them that when and where you can land or take off from. I'm sure you have been into aircrafts. If not, I'm sure you will have a flight soon. Then what you can notice is that many times the captains, I have traveled international a lot and I observed that many captains in aircrafts, when they announce or they speak to the crowd who are on board, their English is not so well. Many times even I can hardly understand what they are talking. Really, you can hardly understand what they are talking. But then, why English is there even in aircraft industry? Because as I said, it's a de facto standard. But this is kind of funny story I'm telling you in the middle here, that how aviation industry picked English today. So no matter you are flying from Moscow, Russia to New Delhi, when you take off from Russia, you are going to ask in English. Russian Airlines Flight 101 permission to take off. And when that flight reaches to Tokyo, let's say, for transit, they are transiting from Tokyo to New Delhi, they will again ask permission for landing in English, permission for takeoff from Tokyo, Tokyo to New Delhi in English. Same thing happens in New Delhi, India. No matter what country you are coming from, no matter what country you are going to, English is the de facto standard today. 
So what has happened is that English is becoming important day by day. So if you are trying to be a global professional, that today you are in India or maybe some other country of your homeland and you are planning to go to a state, England, Europe or any other country, even foreigners coming to India. Let me tell you one more thing. When foreigners are traveling to India, they need to even work on their English. Why? Because crowd in India is not ready to understand or not tuned to understand how they communicate. When I was working in India uh, back in uh, 2008, I had a vice president who was asked to go to India for a few years, live there, build the teams, build the organization and then fly back to the United States. I have seen him working so hard with all the Indian people there to make them understand how he speaks. And same thing happened with Indian people because they have to work to pick up some accent to pronounce words correctly so he understands. So basically it was a learning curve for both the sides not only for Americans or foreigners who are traveling to your homeland, a non-English speaking continent, even for local people who are communicating with people from abroad and living in your homeland. So let's talk a little bit about what are the techniques to build good English communication skills. Rule number one, the most important rule, grammar. You need to pick the grammar that what are the ways to speak correct English. Pick up a good book. Here in my article, I have already shared a link. And if you see here, I opened that book already here. Sorry, not this one. This one right here. This book is showing you a couple of ways. If you just want to see, let me do a little bit zoom here. I'm leaving you for a few seconds here. Just go through some sentences and see if it makes sense to you. So as you can see there are some sentences given which explains that she likes them to play in the garden. She thinks they are safe there. So this book is a very good book which I have given as a sample. It's a free download. You can just download from here. It is a 300 pages plus book. And the good thing I liked about this particular book is that you do not need to even learn any grammar by yourself. For example, look at this sentence. I would prefer you to pay cash. If you will read some of the sentences like that, you will hear those on daily basis, maybe in some stores, maybe in a bank, maybe talking to somebody from a customer care, trying to pay your credit card bill online or, or many other things like that. So if you will go through this book, you will find a very good source of information to help you build your, your vocabulary to strengthen your grammar. So rule number one, grammar is most important thing. You need to work on your grammar. So rule number two, many people I have seen what they do, the moment they start learning English communication, they try to, to speak in a peculiar or a particular accent. For example, they want to sound like as American as possible. They may want to sound as British as possible or Australian, Canadian. There are many, many accents available. When I traveled first time, uh, from India to Indonesia. Uh, I worked there from 2002 to 2004 for two years. That was my first experience when I was left in a foreign land where nobody was able to understand my native tongue. I have nobody. There was only one of my friends who traveled with me. He and me were able to communicate in our local language. Otherwise, 24 hours we were dependent on English. When I traveled first time, my focus was not on English. 
because how do I communicate with Indonesian people because they do not understand English so well either so what I did I have to be very careful with the way I pronounce words what I learned over there is that I need to pronounce words very very clearly whatever I say is understandable by others so accent was not my problem my problem was to communicate with an easy language usage with Indonesian people I did fairly well over there then I came back to India again in 2008 I traveled from India to United States I was given an opportunity to work with Microsoft and when I landed here it was a totally different ball game I was in a totally different world and I had to work upon on my accent at that time because when I say can I have a glass of water many people will not understand it in first instance let me say it again if I am in a restaurant and I'm asking can I have a glass of water not many Americans in a restaurant or maybe outside somewhere will have little bit difficulty to understand it but if I ask can I have a cup of water please they understand it a little bit faster because I use some accent over there and their words in America they do not use word glass very often they call it cup but in India cup is a different thing than a glass so regardless of this cup and glass thing I am focusing more on accent so do not work on accent immediately when you are in learning phase <clears throat> work on your English rule number three skill building I have seen many videos many many professionals teaching in native language for example Hindi so just as good as I want to teach you object oriented programming in Hindi I really have tough time to understand why <clears throat> first of all people want to learn in Hindi when you are in technological field second I also don't understand why people want to teach let's put both the things aside let's say you want to learn somebody wants to teach okay that sounds good but let me ask you this what exactly do you hear from them which makes sense to you in Hindi they still use the words in English like class object instantiate keyword right or maybe some class names everything is English but what you are bound to hear what you are more maybe you know a focus to hear is in in Hindi that they use some gluing some plumbing words in the middle that make no sense look at this here for example if I had to learn what is dot net then what is it you won't understand in this dot net is a platform and framework which allows you to build applications using many dot net compliant programming languages and even deploy and run those on many non Microsoft platform operating systems if I say the same thing with some Hindi words in the middle or maybe your native language words in the middle how would that help I don't understand to some extent I agree that some people may have some difficulties to understand it because if you try to explain many many more things and you start conversating in English you go beyond technological word and you start building stories and giving some more examples then maybe it becomes complicated but that's the challenge you have a task you want to work on your English communication skills and hence you have to learn only in English so whatever book you read whatever videos you watch whatever audios you listen everything should be in English then only you can learn otherwise there is no other way rule number four listening is very important many times people think it's only about communicating communication is a two-way process you speak you listen you listen you speak so listening is very important 
the best way I can recommend is do not listen to any songs in English like Michael Jackson or anything don't do that that's a waste of time what you can do is to listen focus on listening to maybe some news listen to any news channel for some time if you are learning something in technology listen to some of the YouTube channels maybe or to your speaker whoever you like that doesn't matter you should even listen to multiple people so you will learn their their way of speaking and you can there is always an opportunity to learn from someone that is what I think so here is the link to my YouTube channel I have a couple of videos there you can listen to my videos if you like to now another rule I suggest is that no slang language many times people people pick without knowing about language they pick some slangs yeah nope yup bro cool they pick all these type of words but these things doesn't help these things does not reflect that you really know how to speak in English so focus on English always say yes I worked with the two Britishers um, and whenever they were hearing anybody saying yeah they were not kind of liking it they always said no you should not say yeah you should say yes even I am in America for many years now but whenever I speak I prefer to say yes instead of yeah so no slang language try to stay away as much as possible rule number six hang out with right people how do you pick who is right who is wrong I am sure you have all the right people beside you but here I'm trying to focus on those people who are right for you to learn communication in English so if you are having few friends some of those are who encourages you or do not feel hesitant or shy or you do also don't feel the same way with them to speak in your broken English or they know you are struggling to build your English communication hang out with those people who encourage you and speak with them rule number seven think big start small so for example you are in a discussion you are you are thinking something you are and then your turn comes and you you have to speak then whatever you know try to say in English that happens many times when I worked in Mumbai many times that happens we go in a meeting room we all speak same language or even if we are from different states we communicate using one common language which is Hindi for me and for many others as well in India now what happened is that people start in saying English but all of a sudden they jump or switch to Hindi so that doesn't matter that happens in your native land that is possible you can change your gears so the good thing about that is at least you know how to how to say something how to speak a particular technical thing or how to share your idea in English language that's most important now rule number eight go slow learning is a slow process so if you are learning to communicate in English and you want to build good communication skills it is very important that you go slow do not try to speak fast many times people think that if you speak fast English you speak so well that's not right that's a myth people who are good speakers look at John F Kennedy he has given world's finest speeches look at Swami Vivekanand from India if you on YouTube you can find his speech all these great you know people who have given speeches look at even Obama he is known for his speeches all of these people they speak slow they take pauses so people can find meaning in what they are saying and most importantly people can understand and then they move on rule number nine very very important even though if you if you build good communication skills and your pronunciation is wrong you are again lost everything is gone so pronunciation is the most important thing when you are communicating here I have given some examples these three words try to pronounce these and in this whole paragraph I am trying to also emphasize in rule number 10 I will emphasize upon that but here is a 
link for pronunciation tool which you can see from here let me open that for you real quick so this is a tool here and I will pick one word so if you are seeing me typing this here try to pronounce it and then see what it says So if you will go and you will click on this word here, it pronounces it as scythe, scythe, S-C-Y-T-H-E, scythe. So I will leave it up to you to try it by yourself. And then rule number 10, come out of native way of pronunciation. This is very important. People from different places in the world have their own way to pronounce few words and few things. I'm from India and I'm not hesitant to share one example. Um, in calcium, so it's a mineral, calcium, and uh, doctors sometimes pronounce uh, it as calcium even. Uh, when I was in India, I was also pronouncing as calcium and I'm not hesitant to say that but after coming here I learned that how do doctors pronounce it here in the States or what is the right way of actually pronouncing it so I say C A L C I U M and I search for it and I found it and when I hear them it simply says calcium calcium then why I have been pronouncing it as calcium for long for many many years even if you are listening to my video now pronounce it yourself and I'm sure you might be saying calcium or ask to other person what is it and they will say calcium because this is how we have been listening to it and we learn to pronounce it but according to spelling and its origin there is no sh sound in it there is no sh it's c cal c not cal she right so come out of your native native way of speaking uh, many people from different states and different parts of india pronounce things differently uh, that is also an issue i would say uh, try to work on those come out of your native way of pronouncing things uh, watch videos use this pronunciation tool put some word in randomly and try to see that how it helps so let's summarize real quick all the 10 rules I have been proposing here a learn grammar for better English communication there is a link to the guide you can download that save that and learn from it and work on your weak areas rule number two focus on building the communication skill learn the grammar collect the fundamentals and do not focus on accent just try to speak as plain and simple English you can no accent rule number three learn technology in English only so no more native videos no more native audio talks or books or anything like that rule number four listening results in great learning not only speaking listening is very important so listen to others I gave my YouTube channel link there you can listen to any anybody you like and as I said earlier, I'm repeating it again. <clears throat> I highly recommend listening to many people. Rule number five, <clears throat> no slang. Use words <coughs> which reflect respect for the language. <clears throat> Rule number six, write company. Connect with the people who encourage you to speak good English. Rule number seven, think big, start small. Rule number eight, speak slow but steady and you will win the race. So slowly you will learn to speak lengthier sentences, right? So do not think that I need to make whole sentence or whole communication you need to do in English only. Begin with whatever you can, finish wherever you can or you are not able to move any further and then 
pick your native language if you are with native people and then again work on it slowly see how others are building sentences rule number nine very important pronounce right this is impressive in its own way when you pronounce words people notice that they know what you're saying rule number 10 go global to some extent come out of your native way or native tongue the way you pronounce things for example calcium but it's not calcium it's calcium uh, the purpose of this video is not to hurt anybody's feelings to mimic anyone though I was mimicking to myself and I was sharing only those things which I have tried and realized the benefits out of it and I'm not ashamed of that that I come from a very modest background I struggled a lot to learn English and I'm sure many people are doing that and I'm really proud that wherever I have reached today from where I was many many years ago and that's why I'm trying to help as many people as possible so this article has all the tools you need all the guidelines you need to build your greater English communication skills and produce yourself or showcase yourself as a great software developer to entire world my best wishes are with you if you need any help any suggestions please feel free to reach out to me and I would love to help you thank you very much for watching I appreciate it